Annika is wondering, uh, for people looking to do their postgrad in, uh, it, it says this field, so I'm assuming quantum machine learning. Uh, yeah, how does somebody, uh, you know, get the right background? I guess it's it's they watch one YouTube video on the Schrodinger wave equation, uh, <laughs> and then they're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I think, uh, yeah, well, that's the spark. And then the rest is a lot of um, sleepless nights, hard work, and uh, <laughs> eating and breathing physics, quantum physics, till so things start to click, right? Um, no, so I think I think for for people in South Africa, you know, I can, I can immediately say, okay, well, Francesco's group at the University of Stellenbosch, if you're interested in quantum machine learning, this is the way to go. But for other people in, in other countries and other places, this is... Um, it's not so easy to always figure out who to contact and what to do, right? So um, if you're interested in quantum machine learning, I'd say start by um, first figuring out figuring out what it is you're interested in the field, like within the field, right? Because it's quite broad. So there's a beautiful, there's a beautiful textbook that's, you know, I'm, now I'm again going to give a shout out to my, prof my professors. So um, there's a book called Machine Learning with Quantum Computers that was written by Maria Schultz and Francesco Petruccioni, who were my PhD supervisors. But this textbook is, is absolutely beautiful. It covers almost everything there is to cover in, in quantum machine learning, all the aspects, all the different types of things, all the moving parts. And it's also super digestible for someone who is not a physicist. Um, so someone like me, for example, I, I wasn't a physicist by background. Um, but I could pick up this book and I could kind of make sense of it after a couple of reads. So I'd recommend starting with something like this. And within this textbook, there are references for each section and each thing. So if there's something in there that like piques your interest, you can kind of look at the reference and see the paper and see the authors of the papers. And there you can start to gauge, you'll see immediately some commonalities in like who's writing the certain types of on, on the research on the topics that you like. And just reach out to them directly. I mean, academics in particular are super approachable. You know, it might seem strange to just send somebody a random email if you're coming from, um, you know, the investment industry or like any kind of industry. But in academia, this is totally normal, right? Like just reach out and say, hi, I've read your, your work and I have a question about it and I, I want to study it or I want to be, I want to do my postgrad. And nine times out of 10, if you structure the email appropriately um, and positively and you show your enthusiasm, you convey that that spark of interest, um, someone will help you. So I think this is a this is a way to go. And this is kind of like what I did, right? I, I wrote emails to everybody, even though nobody knew who I was. I was totally random. I had no skills, um, but I was persistent. So th these are the two things, like be polite, be persistent, and um, and find research positive. groups like this. Yeah, yeah, positive. Polite, persistent, and positive. <laughs> three, three keys, keys of, of academic reach outs. <laughs> you heard them here first. <laughs> yeah, we should patent it. But um, it sounds so cheesy and so stupid. But I mean, this is this is like really the advice I can give. And um, and yes, university groups in particular are rather responsive, and they're always usually looking for people to do postgraduate studies in. So I think this is not yeah not too difficult these days. <laughs>